35 years worth of studying networks in the brain. We really want to understand what those patterns actually mean and uh, how the brain is actually functioning. So this really led in the last 10 years to thinking about how we could use modern technology, especially in computer science, to understand the organization of the brain better. We have a big advantage because we we're the only group really in the world that has a flat map of the brain. You have this very good anatomical map. You have this very powerful database, but there's no communication between the two. The database is, contains all this information that's very helpful to scientists, but it's difficult to access. The map is a very useful explanatory tool, but it needs things layered on top of it. And I took this as an opportunity to build something like a Google Maps for the brain that would take this map and this data and connect the two. And we're drawing this on a decade's worth of data that our lab has pioneered and collected with over 70,000 data points of reports of brain connectivity and the molecules and cells we can find in the brain and making it really easy and digestible for clinicians and researchers to use. A researcher who might be interested in studying Parkinson's disease or dopamine, for example, would know that the molecule dopamine is produced in this brain region called the substantia nigra. And they could find it on the map by clicking in the search bar, starting to type in Substantia. And even before they were done, the program would be able to understand what they were looking for and help them find it. So they click on that, produced. I'd say we know where it is on the map and we can add this to the map now. And this is where the dopamine is being produced that is going wrong and dying in someone who has Parkinson's disease. But if I want to know what that region is connecting to and how that's operating in a more complex network that's generating behavior, that data is already at my fingertips and really easy to use. So I can click on it and add this data to the map. I can find some of the connections between the parts, some of the molecules I can find in this region, like dopamine, the different cell types that might be there, or some references that this data came from so I could do some exploration myself of the original data and say, okay, well, what are some of the outputs? And we have an output up to this region that's involved in controlling our behavior and things like walking. And I trace this connection up and it'd be interesting then to find out what parts that part connects to and how that would form a larger circuit that would influence how I behave. And so we can use this geographic flat map of the brain as really a way to show the basic highways, the basic cities, the basic geography of the brain. The reason this project is so important is because the brain is so important. There are over a thousand diseases that involve the nervous system. Everything from autism to schizophrenia to learning disorders to stroke. We have essentially been at a standstill thinking about how to create really effective cures for these diseases. And many, many people now think that understanding these neurological diseases is going to require understanding the circuitry of the brain.